Hello, my name is Randy Leedy. For 25 years, I was professor of New Testament at Bob Jones University Seminary with a special focus on teaching Greek exegesis. I also had the privilege to author the Greek New Testament sentence diagrams that were published in Bible Works some years back. The topic of our session today is Greek New Testament sentence diagramming. The reason I feel so strongly about this topic is that I have found this to be one of the most powerful devices for exegetical discovery in working with the Greek New Testament. So uh, let's get going, but let me mention at the beginning that there is a special offer coming up later in the video, so you won't want to miss that. So let's take a look at a sentence diagram. This is Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, a very familiar passage. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword and so forth. Uh, when we see the diagram, you'll be able to see by the time we're finished how the structure of this verse breaks open so clearly. The first main clause is verse 12. The word of God is, and a whole list of five descriptors here. It is living, it is active, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is piercing to the dividing. The dividing of what? Well, you have two pairs of things. The dividing of soul and spirit. And Teb marks another pair dividing between joints and marrow. And then the fifth thing in the series, it is able to judge thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So you notice you have a coordinate series of all of these five things stacked up vertically. And you have, when we come to the word heart, we have a decision to make. Uh, does the word heart modify only one previous noun, attitudes? Or does it modify the whole pair, thoughts and attitudes? There doesn't seem to be any reason to connect heart with attitudes more so than with thoughts, so I've diagrammed it as modifying both. The diagram clearly shows that. The text does not show it. This is an interpretive decision that I'm showing by the way I diagram. Then we go on to verse 13. The chi right here toward the left in this major two-part coordinate series corresponds to the chi at the beginning of verse 13. And then verse 13 breaks down into a negative and positive pair. So right here in the center of this coordinate series, you see not but. Okay, not what? There is not a creature invisible before him. But on the other hand, the exact opposite, all things are naked and are exposed to his eyes. And with the dative, uh, the eyes, you see it here at the uh, end of verse 13, we have that same question to ask. Does it modify only the word exposed, or does it also modify the word naked? Since naked and exposed are so conceptually similar, I felt that it was best to take his eyes as modifying both of those. So naked and exposed to the eyes of him uh, with whom we have an account. So the relative pronoun Han is connected by this dotted curve back to its antecedent out to. He is the person with whom we have an account. And my translation, we have an account, reflects that Hebraic construction in which X is to Y means Y has X. The account is to us means we have the account. So when you look at the sentence diagram, you see a beautiful structure here that will lead very naturally into an expositional outline of the passage. We first have a major statement about the Word of God, listing these characteristics of it. And then we go on to a twofold statement about us. We're not hidden from him, but we're open to his eyes and his inspection. And we're reminded, too, that one day we will render an account. Another passage, a longer diagram, but we will look at only a portion of it. From the beginning of Hebrews, in many parts and in many ways, long ago, God, having spoken to the fathers and the prophets, in the last of these days, spoke to us in a son. Okay, here's how the diagram looks. And as you work with this passage, drawing a diagram, you begin to notice some details here. Uh, we have the same verb, laleo, in the participle form and the main verb form. And when we begin to compare the modifiers to the two clauses, we realize they're doing the same basic kind of thing. So we have a time modifier, long ago, God having spoken. Well, long ago corresponds to in the last of these days. God spoke to the fathers. Well, that corresponds to, amen, he spoke to us. God spoke long ago in the prophets, but in these last days, he spoke by a son. So you have these exact correspondences drawing a contrast between God's older speaking to his people and his more recent speaking in a son. 
Now once you arrive at the sun, you realize that you've come to a climactic point in this sentence because everything that follows, and there's a considerable amount of detail to follow, isn't there? It all connects back to the sun. We have three relative clauses laying out important details about who the sun is. And so we see this structure, everything leading up to this climactic expression, God has spoken in a sun, and then the details developing from there going forward in the passage. Visually, this is all very clear as you look at the sentence diagram. What we have done has forced us to think carefully about a lot of different grammatical connections within this sentence. This is one of the great virtues of sentence diagramming. It does force you to think about every word's grammatical connection. Grammatical connections are one of the most important aspects of determining the meaning of a sentence, and diagramming makes you think about all of those things. And in doing so, it encourages you to consider multiple possibilities rather than just assuming that your first thought is correct. It also provides a structured means of working through challenging sentences. We all know what it is to encounter a sentence that we can't figure out at first glance. Rather than taking a hit and miss approach, diagramming provides us a structured means of working through those difficulties and coming to a good understanding. And when you're finished, you have a beautiful visualization of the grammatical structure that you have perceived. This can also deepen a text's impression on your mind and memory. So for example, as we work hard on Hebrews 1 about how God has spoken, that's likely to stay in our minds when we come to the end of the doctrinal section of the book in chapter 12 and we find the author reiterating one last warning, see that you do not refuse the one who is speaking. Oh, the book started that way, didn't it? God has spoken in a son. So we must not refuse what God is saying. And this reminds us of a major emphasis of the epistle in a way that we see so clearly as we see these bookends operating. God has spoken. Don't refuse the one who is speaking. Sentence diagramming is also likely to improve our mastery of grammar, which then in turn strengthens the diagramming, so you get a nice cycle there. Sentence diagramming also leads naturally into thought flow charting, which many people have found to be very valuable for preparing expository teaching and preaching outlines. From a classroom standpoint, diagramming can greatly assist in pedagogy. Teaching students diagramming is a good way to visually teach them how grammar works. And it also provides great time efficiency when you're trying to show students in a classroom setting the structure that you see in a passage. That diagram picture is worth the proverbial thousand words. There have been sentence diagrams drawn by others that you would do well to consult in your own diagramming work. Consulting diagrams drawn by others increases the likelihood that you'll find correct grammatical connections. It will likely bring to light possibilities that you didn't consider until you saw how the other person drew his diagrams. It may lead to improved visual clarity of your own diagrams. It's likely to confirm your sense of improving mastery as you develop your own skills. Your diagrams will look more and more like those drawn by the expert. And of course, there's always the issue of time savings in preparation for teaching or preaching. Sometimes there just isn't time to do your work as carefully as you'd like, and the work of another can fill in. One other thing worth observing is that diagramming may provide moments of smug satisfaction when you realize that your diagram is actually better than the one that was published. I hope you get to enjoy that moment from time to time. The sentence diagrams that were published in Bible Works are now available in PDF form. Here are the prices. And let me show you what this PDF looks like. Here's the cover. Let's just open to Romans 1.16. So I'm clicking on Romans chapter 1. Verse 16 is in this range. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Notice the grammatical note indicated in the right margin. As you pass your mouse over that icon, you'll be able to see the text of the note. And then the special deal I talked about for Daily Dose of Greek viewers. There are three coupons available with varying expiration dates. I especially encourage you to see the Grab It Now coupon, and if you're viewing this in time, go get it. There's also a Facebook group for Greek New Testament sentence diagramming. You can see it here. So I encourage you to do what you can with Greek New Testament sentence diagramming. I think you'll find, like I have, that it's a very satisfying and soul-enriching experience.